Hey, everybody. Welcome to part, I don't know, I've lost count of our mini series all about the cool new extensibility model, Visual Studio dot extensibility. This is part of a mini series that we're doing on Visual Studio Toolbox, where I'm your host, Leslie Richardson. And today I am joined by Bertan from the extensibility team, who's going to be talking about dependency injection today. How are you doing, Bertan? Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Sweet. Thanks for being here. So if you are new to this playlist, good news, this is a playlist. Just scroll up to the top or the bottom, however you've got them sorted, and start from the beginning just so we're all on the same page. It's really cool stuff, I promise. And yeah, now we're talking about maybe a little bit more of an advanced topic when it comes to writing extensions, which is dependency injection. So, so we're all on the same page with that. Can you tell us a little bit about what dependency injection is and why people might need to use it when writing extensions? Sure. I uh, Up until this point in this series, I think we talked about like isolated sections of the extensibility API. We talked about project query editors, uh, commands. But when you write a larger extension, you kind of combine all these pieces together like a puzzle. And dependency injection kind of helps you connect those pieces with your own code. So uh, we're going to showcase a markdown linter extension that we actually include in the samples gallery in our VS extensibility repo. And this combines uh, ed editor text view listeners, commands, and some project query API mixed in there too. And then we share some central components via dependency injection. Great. So it sounds like a good way to demonstrate dependency injection and in action. Dependency injection is such a mouthful. Sometimes. Yes, yeah, every time oh, I yeah. I always have to pause before I say it. Uh, the sample in question that is going to be linked below. So if you want to follow along or try this out after watching this video, you can. Just like you can all the other samples we talked about so far. So uh, shall we jump in? Yep, sure. So the goal of the extension is to run uh, Markdown Lint CLI on your Markdown files. So I just had a sample solution here with two Markdown files, just like a long line there, nothing really too long of a test, but if you look at the error list, the extension is running now in the background as you uh, make changes, so we can uh, make the change, and then eventually it should update with new errors. Mm -hmm. So basically, this is the extension, then we also have settings where you can uh, ignore one of the errors, so let's give it a quick try, uh, like I can edit my settings uh, with Let's say MD013. And if I go here, make a change again. And after a while, as the background text will uh, kicks in, you see that MD013 error is gone. It's not being reported anymore. Uh, these settings are something we're going to be talking in a feature series. So I'm not going to cover that here. But it's just part of the extension as a sample. So this is the extension. I'm, let me close my ID. So how this runs is we start with the extension markdown linter extension file just without like regular to other samples. Uh, we have the configuration here, but in addition to the configuration, we now utilize the initialize services method, which is basically initializing our dependency injection injected components in our extension. So in here we have settings observers, we add something called linter utilities, and then we add our markdown diagnostic service. So how common is it to override that initialize services method? Or why are we doing it here? Yes, so if you have an extension with multiple components, like let's say multiple command handlers, let's say a text view listener, uh, it would be, I would say, pretty common to up overwrite this and add your own services here so that uh, you get, like you can share some stuff in between that. So for example, let me walk through like a couple of the uh, components of the extension. We have run linter on current file command on the tools menu. So if you notice that this command uses something called markdown diagnostic service, which is my own class in this extension, but it's shared by multiple commands. So the same, t same thing is shared by the run linter solution command. And then we have a text view listener that was running the background linting that you, I demo before, which is also using the same diagnostic service instance. So this is a common pattern as your extension grows where you have multiple components, but you want to share some code between them. 
or share some utility between them. And this is a good way to use dependency injection. And you start with this in your initialized services override. Let's say I want to add a instance of markdown diagnostic service to my service collection so that it will be available to components. Gosh, that makes sense. And we've also got, so we're adding a singleton, makes sense. We're adding settings, observers, but then we're also adding this add scoped method here. What exactly is the deal with that? Yes, good question. Uh, we have three different lifetime life uh, lifetimes in the dependence injection, and we are using the Microsoft dependence injection framework, which is used like in ASP.NET as well. So we have singletons, which are, as their name suggests, they are basically lifetime as the lifetime of the extension. We, they're only created once. Uh, there's something called transient, which I don't have in this demo, but it's created and it, it creates a new instance every time it's used. And then we have scoped in between, which we needed to utilize for Visual Studio.extensibility. And the meaning of scoped in this case is that instance of, let's say here, the Markdown Diagnostic Service uh, would be scoped to the lifetime of the command instantiation, uh, a command instance or a text view listener instance. We needed to have scopes here because like for things that inject Visual Studio extensibility object, which the text view listener does here, this itself is a scope injection. So you can't like inject it from a singleton. If you have anything that injects Visual Studio extensibility, you'll have to make it a scope lifetime and pay attention to that lifetime. I'm using singleton for something that doesn't really have any dependencies to VS Visual Studio extensibility. Mm -hmm. So I can make that a singleton, but for something that has dependencies on it, I add a scope one. Makes sense. So this is a pretty common thing to add when you're using the new mm -hmm. extensibility model. Yes. Are there any other like additional differences when talking about dependency injection as it relates to like MEF? Uh, yes. So in the previous Visual Studio SDK, the extensibility was done via MEF, via service provider proffering. This is different. This is this dependency injection. And that was like global to the whole IDE. Uh, in this case, the service collection you see here is scoped to your extension. So you can't use this to share services between two extensions. That will be a different thing. So the, that scope is the main difference. And your door to other Visual Studio features, other extensions, is still the Visual Studio extension object, essentially. So the dependence injection is mainly there for you to organize your extension within the scope of your extension. So that's Thanks. the big difference between MEF and this dependence injection usage. Cool. So ultimately, would you say it's like more streamlined of a process in this new model versus the MEF experience? Yeah, different process. It's different scopes. And yeah, we feel like this is the having a single Visual Studio accessibility surface area to access VS features is easier. But then we acknowledge the need to share services within your extension. So we added the support for dependence injection. The one interesting thing here is you'll see this method in the overwrite. And this mm -hmm. is not a method that I implemented. Uh, this is a method that we provide that, and we have several other extension methods as well. If you do that, you will see uh, some extension methods that uh, we provide like profile broker service and add settings on observer is another one. What this does is this adds observers for settings that you defined that you can inject in your other components. So an example of this would be in linter utilities that if you look at here, uh, we in the constructor, we ingest markdown linter category observer. This is added to the service collection by that add settings observer method. So sometimes we're going to have these extension methods to basically add our own mix of classes to the service collection to help you develop things faster. And this observer allows you to read the settings value so that I can read the disabled rules setting, for example. Uh, as I said, the settings will be something we're going to cover in more detail in future episodes. But Great. yeah, that's the settings observer. And let me see a couple other things. We have, I think we've seen as we were walking, like going through the couple definitions in the commands, we in, inject trace source. This is another thing that we provide. So this is a, any, any of your components can inject the trace source instance. And this is a 
is a scope to your extension where we log outputs so you can use it for logging. It's basically just built in logs in that case. That uh, yes, we I think it outputs some log directory and we're gonna we've seen demos of the diagnostic explorer and we eventually want to uh, add those logs to there. Sweet. So where do they currently exist now? Like an output window? Uh, they currently exist on the disk. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. So uh, we're currently in the, uh, what is this file called? It's a long one, run linter command file, <laughs> in which we're using to pass in those logging services and all that. So, I mean, that looks pretty straightforward. What else is there that people should know about when working with like a linter in this case? Uh, in the linter, so the structure we've done here, like we want to showcase is we have two comments that basically are like comments are just wrappers for the functionality that we want to call. So our main service that deals with the Visual Studio APIs is the Markdown Diagnostic Service. If you notice Inject's Visual Studio Extensibility instance, this is the API surface area that we provide. In this case, we use it for Project Query API. If I can find it. Yeah, we, we use it to create like diagnostics, output channel, and in some, somewhere here, we're going to use it to get, I think we use it on the solution command actually, sorry. Yeah, we use the accessibility instance to get the files in the project. And then, as I mentioned, we had the linter utilities, which is our, like, which I designed to be the class as like the class that calls markdown lint CLI. So this has really no VS depend Visual Studio dependencies. It just depends on the settings. And it reads the settings and calls Markdown Lint CLI with the current file or the current contents of the document. So this is the structure of the extension. This is an out of proc extension. What you can inject from the service collection by default is pretty much trace source Visual Studio extensibility. And we kind of document other available uh, types to you uh, in our documentation. It's mostly like this service collection is mostly intended for your own use. I like that. I mean, that's definitely one of the big perks about the new model in general, having that out of proc experience and everything that comes with it. So that's good stuff. And speaking of which, what is sort of the major difference when it comes to doing dependency injection, dependency injection, see, I cheer for it every time <laughs> when it comes to writing an in proc extension? The in proc extensions are more, are same. Like you have the same capabilities. There is additional types available to you. And we actually have this in samples. Yeah, I'm just going to show the sample. This is an import extension called comment remover. This is again in our extensible to samples repo. And if you notice, there are two different types that we haven't showcased before because these types are not available in the out of, in, are not available in the out of proc uh, world. Uh, because we don't have the concept of MEF or uh, I service provider, that the global Visual Studio service provider there. In If you have an improc extension, you can actually use these types to inject that services that were available to you via MEF or uh, I, the global service provider in Visual Studio. This could be like DTE or the text adapter factory service, which is available from, from MEF. So this is the main difference in improc. We are hoping that this pattern allows you to stay within the dependency injection pattern of what we're presented with the Visual Studio Extensibility API while still being able to use APIs that are available in PROC that are not yet available in the out of PROC Visual Studio Extensibility surface area. So sometimes with dependency injection or programs that enable or are using dependency injection, it might be a little tricky to debug. So what are the tips and tricks for? debugging an extension like this? So Diagnostic Explorer is going, we plan to, we plan for Diagnostic Explorer extension that we showcased in an earlier episode to the, to me, the go-to place. And right now we do not put very usable logs there. So what will happen is, let's say if you made a mistake, let's say you forgot to, or actually this would be a better, if you did add singleton here, uh, this may not work because it's not scope. Like it, it wouldn't be able to create Markdown Diagnostic Service because Visual Studio Extensibility is a scope instance. So this will error out when it's trying to create any any instance that uses Mark that injects Markdown Diagnostic Service. 
Uh, in some cases, this is raised as an exception. You can see it in the debug output log. In some cases, it just stops the exception running. And if you look at Diagnostic Explorer, it gets shown as string JSON RPC exception today, a generic one. So we're going to make that work better. Uh, right now, the best option is to run it under debugger and watch the exceptions and see if you get like a composition exception where say, that this service could not be instantiated or found or the scope is wrong. Yeah, at least it sounds like one of those extensions might say something along the lines of the scoping is yeah. incorrect or the initialization is <laughs> incorrect because I was worried it might be too vague and it's like, how do you even narrow down what's... Yeah. One different thing to math that people maybe use, like if they were developing extensions, where there is no composition ahead of the time. Mm -hmm. So you only get injection errors as you are in instantiated classes. So you're going to get exceptions at that point. Gotcha. So is there anything else that people should know about when using dependency injection? Uh, no, not really. I mean, we put it in there for helping people like share components uh, between multiple components that extend Visual Studio. So we do account like a larger extension will have many commands, many parts, like it could have multiple text view listeners. So this is there to help you organize all that. Uh, experiment with it. If you have any feedback, uh, you can post it at the VS Extensibility repo. Sounds good. Yeah. As Bertan mentioned, try it out. All of the links to both this Markdown Linters uh, sample and any other things that we talked about, including the diagnostics extension, which you can also learn more about in detail in the command placements episode, which came right before this one. And uh, yeah, try them out to your feedback. Uh, Bertan, thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, thank you. And thanks to everybody watching. Keep watching because we have even more to come in this great mini series on Visual Studio extensibility, which is ever expanding and just getting even better with every passing month. So stay tuned and happy coding. Mm -hmm.